But if you're not going to go to the ski day, you can still get it. Just just talk to Jen during the break. Jen, put your hand up. I'll make sure at the next break, which is after the next six talks, uh, Jen will. I'll get her to put her hand hand up, and you guys can go. Yeah, you can come to the ski day and not ski. Yeah, lots to do there. We're all going to be hanging out, but uh, <laughs> drink. Yeah. Um, okay, our next speaker is uh, TJ Vantol. He's a developer advocate at Telerik. Um, he has he used to commit to jQuery, is that correct, on the jQuery team, uh, and does a lot of work in the plugin ecosystem. Telerik's really well known for that, uh, and I'll let him take it from here. Thank Thanks. you. All right, so I'm super excited to be here at PhoneGap today. This is actually my very first time in the state of Utah. I have never been here before. And I have to say, the state, even though we cannot see it right now, but it is absolutely gorgeous. So I know a thing or two about gorgeous states. This is my home state, the state of Michigan. And I know you are all very jealous of my state. But while I'm here, yeah, while I'm here, Utah, I do have a little beef that I have to take with your state. So. First of all, how many people here are from the state of Utah? So we have a good number of Utah people here. Um, so I'm talking to those of you from this state. So you may not know that the state of Michigan is the only state in the US that over about the last decade has actually lost people. Uh, for some reason, people don't want to be in our lovely state. And if you look really closely, you'll see that there's another trend going on here, that Utah is actually gaining a lot of people. And so my only conclusion that I can draw from this data is that you, the people of Utah, are using your mountainous wonderland out here to really take people from our state. Uh, and, and I can't think of any other reason why people would want to leave Michigan. I mean, with our safe, family-friendly uh, family neighborhoods and our totally not corrupt at all government officials, uh, our sound fiscal responsibility, our schools, our sports teams. So basically, Utah, stop taking people because we really need them right now. But with that out of the way, I'm going to go to the actual topic of this talk, which is Cordova and specifically Cordova plugins. I do have to warn you up front, though, I will not have a fully playable uh, RPG as part of my talk. <laughs> I, uh, that was absolutely incredible, but uh, the bar was set pretty high. Uh, so I'll see, what I could, I'll see what I can do. Now, I work for a company called Telerik. Uh, and if you haven't heard of us before, we are a software development company that's really best known for building UI components, for building really powerful mobile tooling. And at Telerik, we're big fans of Cordova. And specifically, we're big fans of Cordova plugins. We really believe that Cordova plugins are what make hybrid apps uh, hybrid. Uh, I at least personally believe that the best apps out there take the best from not only the web world, so HTML, CSS, JavaScript authoring, fast deploy, that sort of thing, but also ones that take the best from the native world as well. Now, that being said, Telerik, we've been making Cordova tools for about three years now. And over the time, we've come to realize that there are some problems with the or I should say that it's kind of difficult, or at least in the past, to find high-quality third-party Cordova plugins. And I think part of the reason is there's sort of a strange dichotomy that goes on in the Cordova world. People that tend to want to build Cordova apps tend to be people that like web development. They like writing using web technologies and want to avoid the native code, the Objective-C, Swift, Java, that sort of thing. But those are the very same skills that you need in order to build a Cordova plugin. Plugins are also tricky to maintain. One thing that we ran across is somebody would build an amazing plugin, six months forward, they're not really interested in it anymore, new iOS version comes out, new Android version comes out, all of a sudden there's all sorts of problems. So what we wanted to do is provide a solution or a marketplace for a place that people could get plugins that they could count on, rely on, on the apps that they built. And we call that the Telerik Verified Plugin Marketplace, which we launched about a year and a half ago, in which you can find at plugins.telerik.com slash Cordova. Now, each plugin in this marketplace is free to use. So each one of them has some sort of license that says you can use them without restrictions in your personal and commercial projects. Each plugin is also open source. You can find them on GitHub. Each plugin is verified, meaning we, Telerik, sort of make sure that the plugin does what it's supposed to do before we list it in our marketplace. 
And each plugin is also documented. You make sure each plugin sort of walks you through the basics of what you need to do and tells you the API of what's available. Now we've heard, uh, we've had a great response from you, the Cordova community. The plugin marketplace is now up to 67 plugins and counting. We just crossed over the 100,000 download marks. That's quite a few plugins. And the marketplace itself, we've had a 5X increase in traffic in the last calendar year. So with that in mind, the title of this talk is the Cordova Plugin Roundup. So let's get started. Really, I, I spent a lot of time on that. <laughs> Thank you, then no pity clap. So I'm gonna go through 10 plugins which I picked up, which are things that we've recently added to our marketplace that maybe you find valuable, maybe it's something that you could use in your app, uh, some functionality that you need. The first one I have on my list is an image picker. So this is perfect whenever, and I get my device up because I have a demo here. Whenever you need to select multiple images from your user's photo album, so you can all judge the pictures I've been taking lately here, and I can select a few of them. You see you get a nice native UI for selecting pictures. This plugin works on Android and iOS, and just a quick little way that you can sort of use multiple images in your application. The second one is Facebook. This was one of our most requested one to get listed. This is just a really common requirement people have, the ability to either log in with Facebook or integrate with some sort of Facebook technology. The third one, or I says the next few, are all related to taking your user's money. So if you need to do that, we have in-app purchase plugins for both Android and iOS. You can see how it ties into the native functionality. We also have Stripe uh, as well as PayPal plugins as well. The PayPal one's a little bit older, which is why it's not on my list. Now, with that, I'd like to take a quick break from the plugin roundup uh, and ask, answer, I should say, another common question that we get. People ask, well, we have all these plugins, where do they come from? Well, really, they're a mix. Some of them are community written. The first three I had on my list were things that the community written, we looked at, we said, hey, these things work. We want to expose them to our customer and our user base, so we're going to go ahead and list them in our marketplace. Some are also Telerik written. The Stripe plugin, for instance, the last one I showed was something that we wrote internally. But Regardless of this, there's one common theme that runs sort of throughout the marketplace, uh, and that theme is this guy. <laughs> so I heard a few of us. How many, know who, how many people know who this is? Okay, so I see like 10 people in the room. This is Eddie uh, Verbruggen, and AKA Eddie the Plugin Verbruggen. <laughs> now, when I was putting together this roundup, I just noticed by chance that out of the 10 plugins I picked, six of them happened to have been originally authored by him. <laughs> So I really wanted a picture of my slide deck of Eddie sort of in a superhero costume, right? Just because I thought it was befitting. But I don't have one of those around, but I do have the next best thing, which is this picture, which I think works fairly well, uh, particularly because I am actually also in this picture. And I'll let you make up your own backstory for how you think this whole thing went down. But for now, back to the plugins with a specific focus on Eddie's plugins. So. 3D Touch. If you have an iPhone 6S or your users do, one thing you may know, if I open up my demo here, is that you can sort of do this long press thing to sort of bring up a list of actions that your app can do. So with this plugin, this is a Cordova app, you can define some of these functions for your app to use, and you get a JavaScript callback so when the app launches, you can take some action. Another thing you can do to make your app feel a little bit more native is this is, there's this feature in it called Link Preview, which if I enable it and I long press or force touch, oops, force touch is kind of a weird thing. It's very sensitive. So if I force touch this link, it'll open it in this sort of like, uh, I don't even know what this is called, but this sort of native iOS functionality that you can bring to your Cordova apps. That's 3D Touch. Number six is the Apple Watch plugin, which I actually think is probably from an engineering perspective, the coolest plugin that we have in the marketplace. What Eddie's plugin actually does is it scaffolds out a full Apple Watch app with a bunch of just hidden UI components. And that approach lets you use a JavaScript API to basically programmatically show elements in your screen to build up your Apple Watch app. So you can use Cordova to actually build an Apple Watch app, which I think is pretty cool. If you're interested in this, head to the marketplace, look at the documentation. It's actually really thorough. So it walks you through more of a technical details that I can give today for how it works. It walks through all the APIs that are available. But if your users are looking for an Apple Watch app or it's just something you'd like to provide, it's a cool one to check out. Number seven is Touch ID. 
This one is great for authentication if you need to do authentication in your app. So if I go here on my iOS device, I can authenticate with my thumbprint here. So if you have an app that has a login screen of any sorts, uh, you might notice that a lot of native iOS apps do this now to provide a little ease of access. And you can now tie your Cordova app into this as well. This is only iOS. I know we've had some requests to add this for Android now that some of the newer Nexus phones have the sort of fingerprinty things on them, but currently it's only iOS. Number eight, we're getting close to the end here, is HealthKit. If you have some sort of fitness tracker type app, you can tie into the native iOS health app to store your data there. Number nine is pretty cool. This is one I, we also get a lot of requests for, and it's a way of integrating native maps into your Cordova app. Now, if I go back to my device here and open up the Mapbox demo and go over here and show a map, this is Mapbox running in a Cordova app. But the cool thing is that this map is natively implemented. So hopefully the frame rate here does this justice. But the performance on this map is really good. Of course, it's Amsterdam because that's where Eddie lives. But you have the full Mapbox API, which lets you do some crazy things. Uh, but really easy way to integrate a native map into your Cordova app. So if you're doing any, especially anything non-trivial with maps in your app, it's something that you might want to check out. We have one more here, and that is the Native Page Transitions app. Now, this one I'm sort of cheating because I said I would only include new ones. We've actually had this one in there for a while. I'm including it because, first of all, it's one of our more popular plugins. We get a lot of requests for this, and I'll show it. And also because we do have a few new features. So the most common way of using this plugin, uh, basically it just creates native iOS and Android transitions for navigating between views in your Cordova app. The slide one's by far the most common one people use. You can see um, how well that performs, how well that looks on iOS. There's a couple other ones. Flip gets used uh, a decent amount, especially if you have like some sort of menu that you want to show and flip back and forth. It's pretty convenient for that. My favorite, even though I don't know if it's practical at all, is the curl transition for iOS, which does like a little page curl thing. And if you really want your app to be cool, you can put it in low speed mode, and then you can transition your app like this. It's a really great way to stand out on the app stores. I highly recommend uh, using that approach. But that is the end of the plugin roundup. Now, I'm hoping that of the 10 plugins I saw, something appeals to you. But remember, we have 67 plugins in our, in our marketplace. So you want to head to the marketplace and check out and see what you find out. When you go there, each individual plugin page looks a little bit like this. So you'll see that there's two buttons. The first is just how you can just download the plugin if you want to just get at the raw source code right away, remembering that each of these plugins is completely free and open source for you to use. There's also another link down there that'll let you use the plugin in the Cordova CLI if that's how you roll. You can get your plugin that way, and we have instructions for that. The other button automatically loads the plugin into our Cordova tooling, and that we call that the Telerik platform, which is basically our full mobile development suite at Telerik. And if you haven't heard of the Telerik platform before, we really consider it everything you need to build really high quality Cordova apps. So we have plugin tools like management, uh, plugin management, which I think was one of the best practices mentioned earlier, both for core plugins and easy integration with the plugins marketplace that we have as well. We have uh, in-browser simulators for, that mock out some of the core Cordova plugins just to make testing these plugins a lot easier. We have companion apps, which those of you that went to our workshop yesterday, thank you very much, got to see in action. More quick tools for making testing these plugins and building these really robust apps really easily. Now, in the Telerik platform, we actually have quite a few more things. We have app management, data storage, user management, push notifications, uh, email management, all of these type of things that will help you build your app. So if you're interested, head to Telerik.com slash platform. Everyone here gets a free 30-day trial. All you have to do is head in. You'll go into a little demo that will walk you through the features. So if you're interested in adding some tools to your Cordova workflow, check it out. See if it makes sense for you and your team. The last thing I'll mention is on the plugins marketplace, there's this other little co uh, call out on the side of the screen. The first is a way that you can let us know if there's a plugin you'd like to see. You're building Cordova apps and you're, you're like, man, I really need to get at this API. Uh, we have a voting mechanism built into this. You can request that we build it. We trickle one or two new plugins into the marketplace every month or so. So let us know. You can also submit your plugins to us. If you are the author of a Cordova plugin and you'd like to see your plugin exposed to our customer and user base, just let us know. You can also find us. We're over at the Telerik booth over there. We can come and chat about your plugin as well. 
That's all I have. I have one final announcement, though. We have a very special giveaway today. We are giving away an Amazon Echo. Can everybody go, ooh, ooh. We are going to have a sign up over at that table. So if you want the next great Amazon Echo tool, come see us. And if you want to talk about Telerik or plugins or anything else, come find us as well. So that's it. Thank you. What's that? Oh, uh, we don't have an echo plugin. <laughs> That's cool. Questions? Yeah. Can you repeat it? Uh, the question was, what is the support situation on plugins? And you mean like professional support or? Uh, gotcha. Uh, well, in terms of plugins, so we do offer sort of professional support through platform subscriptions. So if you pay for our platforms, you can report bugs uh, through that means. They are, they are open source plugins. We do monitor the GitHub issues and try to deal with them reasonably per demand. Um, we can't realistically fix every last or address every issue that comes in. So we sort of deal with it like on demand as things crop up. And that's basically our policy for managing that. Yeah. 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 So the question was, since we do some of the work <laughs> to to sort of enhance plugins, like at times we'll take some of the plugins and maybe there's an iOS plugin out there that's really good and it doesn't have an Android implementation. That's the sort of thing we've done in the past and added to them. And the question was specifically, so in that case, if you were a plugin author that had a plugin that uh, it sounds like is not fully maintained, and this is a very specific story, by the way, um, could you maintain? Could you submit the plugin to us and then delete it off GitHub? And the answer is sure. Just 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 let us know if you want to uh, send us the plugin. We we should be able to help you out. But let us know because sometimes those things are in just like a case by case basis. It depends on the individual plugin. Great, awesome. Right, thanks.